Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast. And we get the back view of him. And I mean, it's just a mega. 52 yards is a long shot. Uh, Magnum P.I. is what yeah. we named him. No idea. Just but, a magnum. Yeah, just a magnum. Come on, Cam, last year. We said probably 150, mid 150. Yeah. Same doe from the morning come out with that nine pointer. Here, here steps out this 90 inch eight pointer. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ah. I'm like, okay, well, there's still a buck back there grunting. Yeah. And then out steps like another 90 inch eight yeah. pointer. I'm like, all oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Yeah. Bro. <laughs> You're like, I'm like, deer, right there. Yeah. Like, and he's 30 already yards. 30 yards. Yeah. He, he was literally five yards from the base of the tree. Could have been. I had a buck down at 1.40 in the afternoon back there deep on public. Three does come out pretty early. It was like 2.45, 24 yard shot, sent the combat veteran. And I tell you what, man, dude, it just smoked. We always get so jacked up when the other person kills. It's just almost like we got it done. Yeah. And when you kill that doe, I was like, hell yeah, man. And we come down here to Missouri. My ass called me one more time. I'm like, is it a good buck? And he goes, yeah, real good, solid buck. I'm like, all right, boom. <laughs> and the deer just drops for sure. Super special to me. Whitetail Legacy Podcast, bringing you back to the hunt and leaving a legacy. Baller rut. Everything is perfect. So here we are. We're ready to actually start this sucker. <laughs> We're just... <laughs> We're just going through talking like, yeah, we've been doing this for a while and we still mess up all the time. And this is just like 99% proof that we still know what the hell we're doing. But uh, <laughs> here we go. All right, man. Well, let's start out with an intro for you guys. Uh, just for our listeners, a little backstory. I uh, found you, seen you guys on Instagram and uh, I listened to, I like to listen to new podcasts all the time. So I listened to quite a few of you guys' episodes. Uh, like your flow, like your personality, kind of like us, loose, you know, good vibes, good stories, not taking it too serious, but when it's time to, you know, get some tactics and talk serious, you guys do get into that. But yeah, uh, I think it, it yeah, I feel like it's good <laughs> to have that comedy relief. Um, mm-hmm. I try to do it all the time, try to throw an off ball <laughs> joke. That's just my personality. Shit just <laughs> pops up my head like, I gotta yeah. say it. I got it. I can't not say this right now. It's too too good. So, uh, <laughs> like the Snapchat group, the whole time I, at the after I messaged like six times, I'm oh. like, "Are those girls in here? Because this yeah. is real bad." <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy that always gets in trouble for like someone seeing something they shouldn't have seen. But mm-hmm. all right, well, past that, let's uh go ahead and give yourself an introduction to our listeners there. All right, so uh, my name's Nick. Uh, I got cousin Frank here and brother Tom down on the far end uh we're white cat outdoors we started you know screwing around just ourselves like back in like 2015 making like stupid hunting videos uh like in the blind and stuff um and then about a year or two ago we did like an instagram page just to more log all of our stuff for ourselves really we weren't like looking for followers or anything just to have like all three of us have access to the account and just post our outdoor stuff and then about a year ago, decided to do a podcast because there wasn't really a whole lot of like hunting podcasts on the East Coast. I mean, there's a few. Yeah, there's but, almost none. There was like one at the time. Yeah, there's a couple, got, like, but not very many. Yeah, you got like Truth from the Stand and stuff or whatever, but um, there wasn't many that had like our feel to it. So started our own podcast and just, just talk like hunting, fishing, trapping, you know, rattlesnakes, all kinds of different stuff. So right on. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Like I said, seems like there was a good flow of different topics on your guys' in and um i'm always one to try to give back to people and it's cool in the podcast community it's either like people that want to help out or people that just want to do their own thing and not really give mm-hmm. back and we've always been one to say hey we remember what it was like at the very beginning or you know a year in and to get on a show where you can reach some new listeners because there might be someone that's from your area that would that listens to us that would relate to you guys is talk and hunting tactics way more they yeah, haven't definitely. found you haven't found you yet so i'm hoping that that's what we can do is some guys that are like man i wish they'd have you know some more people on in this region and then we got you guys on and then they got a podcast they can go to to get that content that's relevant to them because at the end you mm-hmm. want you want the shit that you're putting out to be valuable to your listeners it's either entertaining or yeah, sure. one or the other and if they can relate to mm-hmm. you guys better that's awesome in our eyes because well 
we're in this for two reasons to help people try to learn to get a little better and uh, be selfish ourselves, and to be able to talk to people to, to learn a little bit about, you know, a certain tactic, you know, one-on-one with them. Yeah. Yeah. That's something we kind of talk about quite a bit is that like most of like the whitetail hunting podcasts or just hunting podcasts in general are all like Midwest or out West. And a lot of the tactics that you guys might use in Illinois or wherever other people are hunting don't really equate as much to yeah. Pennsylvania or, you know, even. yeah, somewhere over here on the East coast. So it's nice to just have a full scope of the whole country, people talking about those different tactics that work in different areas. Yeah. It's, it's definitely valuable to, ha- to have a couple different podcasts. Cause like a lot of the stuff mm-hmm. out in Pennsylvania, I, I can even relate to some of the stories you're saying and, when you guys are talking, I'm thinking back to a hunt that I had or something. Even if we're in a different state, you can still gain some kind of knowledge from it. So, oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, second thing I got here, uh, when you start a podcast, you got an idea of what you think it's going to be. And then you get into <laughs> it and it's, you know, something completely different. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it'd be cool. You guys are a year, a little over a year in, right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just just, uh, you know, I feel like there's probably someone out there that's listening that might want to start filming or want to start podcasting or something. So. What's some of the stuff that you know, you know you enjoyed you know bringing this podcast to the people? Uh, yeah, so we started like you said over a little over a year ago, and we like announced on our Instagram that it was coming, like a podcast was coming before we even knew how to do a podcast, how to like put it up on an RSS feed or anything. Like we set a date, didn't we? Yeah, we even set a date. We said like coming January <laughs> twenty twenty, like this is happening. Oh, yeah. This is like that was like December. And it was and, like literally like two days before we were supposed to release our first podcast. Like it was Friday night and we're like, oh shit, how do we even put this onto a podcast yeah. platform? And me and Nick are sitting there until like midnight that night, figuring it out. We're like, all right, we got it. We're good for Sunday now. <laughs> but so I guess like one of the biggest things I've enjoyed about it is the connection we've made with, you know, people from different walks of life, I guess. Like we, you know, we try to bring one, because we're not that big, but two, we like to talk to people that aren't maybe big on social media because I feel like some of the best hunters out there don't really care about social media and they've got some really good things to say. Um, you know, like Frank's dad, for instance, is like, I mean, he's been a guide for like over 20 years yeah. in, up in Alaska. And, you know, I, I've known him my whole life, but I, there was a lot of stories I never got until we sat down with him and talked about it. Um, and just like, we've just met some really cool people uh, through social media and through the podcast, that's been a been a blessing. I think for us, I mean, it's it's been more enjoyable and like you know more friends to have in the hunting world because it's you know it seems like we're a dying breed, but when you look at the social media aspect, there's a lot of us out there that are like minded people, and I think the podcast has brought us closer. We had talked with Eric and Greg from Where to Hunt, and it was one of the oh yeah, you're good okay. Got to um, double check them. <laughs> and it was one of them um, after the podcast conversations. And uh, we were talking about there's some guy out there who's a super badass hunter, ha- knows a lot of tactics and stuff, and but he don't have social media. Nobody knows about him, but he's out there just crushing giants mm-hmm. every year, you know? And like, like that guy's out there and he exists. I guarantee it. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like, if you can convince a guy to come on a podcast, a lot of the guys we have on are nervous at first and then they get going. Yeah, like, totally. Oh, man, that was, that was a lot of fun. And if you, everybody has a story to tell and everybody, you know, wants to share their knowledge. Most people, you know, mm-hmm. um, and it's just hard to get them to do it. Like if you're just having a conversation, but if you can record it and then a lot of times I listen to, you guys talk like right now and then i listen to the podcast three weeks later and i'm like shit something hits me you know when i'm listening to it later on that Mm -hmm. didn't hit me during the conversation so it's really nice to be able to go back and pull in on those files i've listened to heath's podcast with us a couple times listened to byron's podcast a couple Mm -hmm. times you know the good ones that that relate to us we go back and listen to and try to pull out more details to it from it but um Mm -hmm. What is, what is one of the biggest pains in the ass from starting it, you guys think? 
uh, probably audio for sure for us. Um, <laughs> yeah, but, that was huge. <laughs> that's, more, that's bad on uh, both of our ends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So for us, like, I don't know what it is. I think it's because none of us have any sort of like technological, like technological, like background. I don't think that's a word, but uh, <laughs> like we don't know what we're doing. Like, so like for us to figure it out was like, there's a lot of hiccups at the beginning and we still run into a few audio issues, but I think, I, I think our podcast, like the audio quality is pretty good. Um, and I think that's pretty important to have a good audio quality to keep people listening. So it's important to us, but it's something we struggle with uh, for sure. <laughs> that and coordinating three people's schedules. Too. Yeah. That's a big one. But yeah, what we did, tough. I think basically at the start of the new year, we said, okay, this year, Wednesday night is podcast night. That way, like we know yeah, nothing you else happens on Wednesday night except we get together and record. But before that, like there was a text sent out on Monday. It was like, hey, what night works for you guys to podcast? Well, someone would say, oh, Tuesday yeah. night works good for me. And someone else is like, oh, I got something going on on Tuesday. So getting yeah, together. And Wednesday up with- also Blackout Wednesday. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> <Absolutely. yeah. laughs> exactly. how can you go wrong? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Podcast blackout. Yeah, yeah, that's perfect. We every time mm-hmm. we're in here, like just absolutely hammered. They're like, we get so many messages. <laughs> that podcast is so good. One of the best ones you guys yeah. have ever done. I'm like, we were barely functioning <laughs> as human beings. I don't even remember that podcast. Yeah. It's funny yeah, because like one of our earliest episodes, Tom got really rip snorting drunk and episode four. Yeah, I think it was episode four. And like so many people were texting us and commenting, like that Tom was fucking killing us the whole time. Like it was they yeah. thought it was so funny. It was like a, a great podcast for us. And we're like, well, Tom doesn't even remember that one. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the last time that that happened, uh, we were in here and Cody and I were just messing around and because we, we had like had this little trend here. Get if you're smoked, somebody's gonna message that as a really good podcast. And then yeah, it happened and we were in here and Cody's like, Yep, somebody's gonna message us. Sure as shit, Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, Man, that, was a good, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, knew it. Yeah, crush that. Yeah. Was coming. Yeah. <laughs> Before we start to bring quality content, we should be like, all right, eight beers minimal. <laughs> then we yeah, get exactly. Yeah. We'd be like number three on the ratings uh, <laughs> every week. <laughs> Who'd you have on your dog? Yeah, that's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this guy just <laughs> never killed anything. Oh, this is fire. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, just picked him up at the local yeah, bar, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a struggle. We we challenge we, we have a challenge with that. You know, we got kids, we both work insane hours, wives, so scheduling this and then scheduling you guys, trying to work out what best works for you, and then scheduling times. That would be the most challenging part on my end. And then homie's in, mm-hmm, he's got yeah. all the, you know, the making the clip bar, all the wires and making the upload the podcast and sending video files. He, he covers all that shit. My shit is just, I got to schedule the people and make the, make the shows happen. And it, it's definitely challenging, but um, I, I will got- say one thing about getting started with a podcast is Apple is a bitch. Yeah. Apple, you know? Apple is tough. <laughs> They kicked our ass. Yeah. I remember back Boy, in the day, we were like, remember that you had to make, your your image a certain size oh, we were like well how are we gonna do this you have yeah. no idea <laughs> well, we're not well, let's we the same stuff yeah. but pc was actually the reason uh one of the hardest things for us like we talked about earlier was like having a bank of podcasts um when we first started we were on pc and every time we had an extra podcast i somehow deleted it while editing and getting it uploaded <laughs> oh man so we ended up switching over to mac and we've been smooth sailing since i guess Mm-hmm. So we're going to stick with Mac for now, I guess, but got to get you a hard, hard drive. drive. Yeah. Homie's got two hard yeah. drives and then the computer. Yeah, Tom's and then... pissed. We filled his computer up with hours <laughs> yeah. of podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Homie's, <laughs> homie's computer is chocked full of. Yeah. It's, it gives me an error. It'll come up here probably by the end of this podcast. Uh, manage, manage your memory. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we got so much, we film, we film weddings, we film commercials for people. We run a podcast and <laughs> You take pictures for people sometimes. Yeah. And it's just a lot of, lot of side hustles on that one Mac, MacBook. Just open it. Yeah. Just smoke, yeah. <laughs> you know? We need to just buy one. I, I'm, we got I, the cash. Flow, next year yeah. <laughs> so. All right. Well, uh, one of the podcasts I really liked when I was listening to your guys' show, um, I believe uh, 
you guys, one of you guys had finally shot a buck at the cabin and it was a spike. Yeah, I just carried yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah, I, I could tell by the voice that it was here. What, what's, so what's all of you guys' names? Break them down for Cause I, I, I want yeah, to. I'm, so I'm Nick. Uh, I was the one that got the buck up the cabin this year. And I'm Frank and Tom. And those Nick's two are brothers. Tom. Yeah. Nick and Tom are brothers and I'm their cousin. Oh, nice. That's cool. You get to hang yeah. out with your family all the time. That's pretty sweet. But mm-hmm. yeah, I, that was the very first episode. I think we had messaged a little bit. Yeah. And then, and then, well, yeah, I you were it. asking about it. And I was like, well, if you're going to listen, like, check out the Deer Camp series, because that's yeah. kind of been our bread and butter this year. It was kind of where we, you know, turned the burners up and produced some better content, more our style, I guess. Yeah. So, I really liked it. Uh, I like kind of like the jabs and stuff that you guys were throwing in there. I thought, that oh, was, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. That was we jabs been coming with for our friends. Three years. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We do the same but, thing with our friends. Do you, uh, do you guys have a Snapchat group for like, yeah. your listeners? That was uh, not for our listeners. No. no yeah, that was one that. of should, our. That'd be oh, yeah. fun. That, that'd that'd be easy to set up. Tidbit of knowledge yeah. I'll put out there for you. What are we having there? Like, Ain't nothing good come out of that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 nothing but fun. That's it. Nothing but fun <laughs> comments. Yeah, yeah. But what, what we got, like 15 people in there? Uh, 14, 15? I don't know. Yeah, 12. Yeah, 12. Anyways, there's been guys come in and out and stuff, but we talk to those guys every day through that outlet. And that's, yeah, that's a good idea. The jabbing on there is next level. Yeah, right? I'm sure. Hell <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's a good way to reach cabin, out It's just here. relentless, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, I bet it's a good way to reach out to like your, you know, 10, 12 guys that listen all the time. And um, yeah. that would be a tip I'd tell anybody because you can't add an ass little people to a group. I wish you could, but it would be like it's it, almost too much right now. Yeah, I used to cap at 31, yeah. it could have went up since then but i mean that would be double almost yeah. triple what we got it's almost too much right now that that shit is i got after i get done with this podcast i'll have like 16 notifications yeah it, 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 <laughs> guys in there ripping on a good conversation or yeah. something and then we got a guy in there snapchat will let you record a minute video and send it every time it's it's a minute yeah yeah we've got, we got buddies it's oh, yeah, the same way more. Yeah. <laughs> so, but well, no, that I episode. Oh, well, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Yeah. Oh yeah, with that episode uh, about my buck, you know, it was it was a spike buck, which is you know that's legal in New York. Um, but like we built a cabin, you know, like three years ago, and you know tore down an old structure. It's all reclaimed wood. And Tom and Frank, you know, back to back, like both got bucks real early mm-hmm. uh, in the first year, I think. And I was busy passing bucks and not shooting them, I guess, mm-hmm. and whatever. But we uh, finally this year, I told him, you know, it's over. Something's dying. I'm killing a buck this year. And uh, it got down into uh, late muzzleloader season. And like, I think it was the last weekend, actually. Yeah, I think it was. And I told Tom, I said, you know what? I don't care what buck it is. If a buck walks by me, it's going down. And I set up on – we had a – hidden food plot like right off the swamp we planted some radishes and turnips and stuff i jumped in there and about an hour before dark the spike come running down the hill and for the for some dinner and it was one of those moments where like i knew that i was killing that deer like way before it even got into the field and he came out shot him and he just ran like 40 yards and biffed it on this like creek bottom trying to like cross it and i think immediately i tried calling tom because he was hunting up there with me and you know, I don't think he answered, but uh, while well, I called Frank right after yeah, that, you called me like Frank, right away. Called some other buddies, you know, and then finally Tom called me back and he's like, you know, Buck or Doe, told him it was Buck. He comes running down the hill <laughs> and just, I mean, it was just an awesome experience. You know, there's a lot of jabs and stuff, but we, you take them well. I mean, I yeah, we've been making fun back. of Nick for two years now for not shooting a buck. Me and Tom got a couple of them up there at the cabin and Nick hasn't shot one yet. So every time we're sitting around the table, drinking beers, we're looking at all the heads on the wall. We're like, Nick, where's yours at? Yeah. <laughs> I heard you had a turkey though. I mean, that, that's, like, yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Shit, yeah. Man. At least someone knows. <laughs> yeah. yeah see, he's not a back. bullshit though. <laughs> I, yeah. I, that's a I, bullshit. I hung the beard. Yeah. I, I hung the beard like right above the table. So it's just like dangling above everybody's heads all night long but <laughs> nice. it's so that's that's kind of one of our rules at the cabin um you know every, every buck so far that's been killed there um back before the property was even mine and tom's uh is in that cabin right now like all the racks are still there 
So it's kind of neat to sit at the cabin table, you know, eating dinner or drinking beers or whatever. And you can look around and every buck that's been killed there since it's been in our family is hanging in there. So that's been pretty neat to, for myself to finally get one up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I seen, uh, when Mark Kenyon merged with meat eater and Mark started making some video content there, um, they went into like his dad's, I- I'm not sure if it was his house or his cabin, yeah. but they had every buck that had been shot by his dad. And I mean, there probably was a deer over 60 inches on the wall, but they were all <laughs> up there, you know, just line the line across just a uh, skull cap and yep. just to be mm-hmm. able to go to a, a, you know, a fork and horn and just tell a story about it. You know, Mark's dad's absolutely jacked about it. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. cool as hell to be able to have that memory and just be able to go back and be like, all of these deer here, we're taking, you know, right here or wherever, you know, yeah. um, j- just like you guys do. That's cool shit to look back on. And especially when mm-hmm. you're ripped hammered at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. on, you know, on deer camp. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, we even, everybody that's ever been to the cabin, uh, we nail dollar bills to the ceiling just for, just kind of memories, you know, just put your name on a dollar bill and put it on the ceiling, kind of mark your spot. Um, just been a really cool, you know, camaraderie thing that we got going on at the cabin. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I want to have you guys on why I got you. I didn't, I haven't heard like, is there an episode that you guys talk about the cabin or anything like that I, that you guys have done? We or, like bring it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Episode one. No, we, the cabin that we don't break the, I guess I wouldn't listen to episode one. The audio is still pretty <laughs> shoddy, but uh, <laughs> Dude, I can, I can break 70, down. The first yeah. 70 of ours is shitty, but yeah. yeah. I was just wondering, so, is it something that you guys like built or was it something you yeah, so, bought or. So, so okay. I, I, I'll, I kind of, I guess I'll break it down. Um, the property has been in our family for three generations. My grandfather owned it, my dad owned it. And then a couple of years ago, my dad signed it over me and my brother. And we had all, we've been hunting up there. It's like 45 minutes from our house. And we've been heading up there, you know, on weekends and hunting and stuff. And always talked about how nice it'd be if we could just like camp up here during hunting season for a weekend. And finally one year, my granddad, uh, he used to raise uh, beef cow and had like his old structure out back that he built, you know, before I was even born. And it'd been sitting out in the backfield forever, pretty much. And he was tired of it and said, you know, if you tear it down, you guys can have all the wood off this thing. We're like, all right, cool. Like we were all, you know, broken college and stuff. And like, we'll take free wood. So we spent out a couple of weeks out there tearing it down real careful, kept all the plywood, kept all the two by fours, everything. Um, hauled it all up there. And luckily Frank's dad actually does construction. So mm-hmm. he helped us lay out to make it safe and, um, so we weren't, you know, weren't doing anything dumb, but, uh, everything besides like, I think like half a dozen two by sixes is totally reclaimed, uh, right down to where we have, like, we have oak floors in the, in the cabin. And then like when you first walk in and then like where the, the wood stove is all like tile that was off of an old job Uncle Frank did. And then last year we expanded, uh, <laughs> yeah, my, expanded. My, my, uh, my old supervisor at work, uh, lost his job there and he had his like office was like a shed inside the building and my boss wanted to cut it up and throw it in the dumpster. And I was like, oh, I'll load that on a trailer. I got this. So <laughs> I took the whole thing up, parked it beside the other cabin. Now we just opened shooters tavern this year. So now we nice. can, you know, we've got a bar on the cross there and it's got power and everything with a generator. So it's been Sweet. a lot of fun. There's a lot of blood and sweat put into it. Cause I mean, we totally built it ourselves and I mean, like even right down to the shingles is all, like stuff from people were like, Oh, I heard you building a cabin. I got like an extra bundle of shingles from when we did our garage. So like everybody that like we know was like just pitched in and was like, here, mm-hmm. I got half a bundle of shingles. You can have those or we got you know, six different colored shingles on there. Yeah, you got like three yeah. tabs. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, you guys you guys should do a yeah, you guys should do a podcast breaking that down. That's we yeah. I definitely like, should do like a full breakdown of yeah, because that's the like cabin. not something that happens very often, I don't think, especially yeah, around no. here. And I I don't know very few people that like go to deer camp even anymore mm-hmm. it's like it's not mm-hmm. it does not happen so when i heard yeah. that guys up there like that would be like when you guys were like oh yeah we'll trade an illinois hunt i'm like damn that that's pretty that's pretty good <laughs> you know what I mean? that's pretty yeah. damn tempting i don't care what i shoot but like just going up there for three days yeah, um, definitely. and then i looked and seen how far it was i was like shit <laughs> <laughs> way out there man yeah, yeah we're that's a long road trip so yeah, yeah we're as far northwest in pa and then we're you know just over the border in new york is where the, the you know we call the yeah. headquarters yeah um so definitely a different different world up there for 
I mean, you guys got all the a lot more hunters and a lot more hunting yeah. tradition. I think it just seems like oh, it's a yeah. lot stronger than here. So Tradition's maybe that, huge down there. Maybe They're having a cabin and you know having that camaraderie is normal for you guys, but around here it's just something that we mm-hmm. don't see a lot. I'm sure there's yeah. some guys out there that don't have social that are still doing it, <laughs> going to yeah. the cabin and hanging out, but it's just big buck this and she got sheds off this buck and all that, mm-hmm. which is awesome. We love that shit, but yeah, it'd be, it'd be really cool to go to a camp with just like the stress of you're like, my goal is to get hammered and have a <laughs> <laughs> for three days instead of I'm going to go up here and kill something. Like every yeah. time we go out like there, I gotta kill. every time we go out there, we're like, we got to kill, we got to kill. And you just the mm. whole the whole season be like, I'm just going to go up to the cabin, wife. I don't know if I'm going to kill shit or not. But I'm going to have a damn good time. Like that yeah. would be. That'd be refreshing well, as then, hell. So. Yeah, when you do kill, we take the heart and tenderloins that night, put a stew right on the stove, and nice. like, just let it slow cook on the stove all night while you're drinking beer. And you know, just <laughs> oh, about yeah. the time you forget that you started doing it, it's done. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> good to go. I'm a terrible cook when I'm hammered drunk. I've ate. That's <laughs> why you got to drink. I, <laughs> yeah, I've ate like three, like maybe like a quarter done squirrel over a wood burner. <laughs> <laughs> Did not die. That uh, shit was so rare. Uh, that was terrible, but it, it, was, it was decent at that point. You know what I mean? But no salt, no this, pepper, no nothing out there. I was like, yeah, like salt, straight. pepper, yeah. No, nope, it's straight. <laughs> so I put that sucker uh, out. This was like, I don't know, four or five years ago. I went uh, salmon fishing up in Alaska, and we caught uh, a shit ton of pink salmon this one day. And, and I didn't know this. I knew nothing about fishing in Alaska, like I'm this PA boy flying. I don't know. It was like a 10 hour flight or some shit, but we caught all these pink salmon. We're all jacked up. We take them home and cook them. Well, while we're cooking them, we're all drinking beers, getting all hooched up and stuff, celebrating our catch. And we ate this salmon and it was like the best salmon I ever had in my life. Well, come to find out, Pink salmon, like the natives won't even feed that shit to their dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's disgusting. Word, yeah. 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 I well, went, I, I, went I to, uh... brought some home. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Yeah. What do you got? Uh, I was, I, I brought some home uh, and I was all excited, you know, told my parents like, oh, this is the best stuff I ever had. Well, cooked it up and ate it without having a few beers, and it was <laughs> disgusting. Oh, like I understand why the natives didn't feed it to their dogs. It was, it was rough. Yeah, I did the same thing. I went to Idaho, and uh, they have a salmon snagging seas down there for landlocked salmon that are like dying pretty much. You get snagged thirty a day, yeah. and I was like, hell yeah! So I put my get just as full as I could get that shit. Went home was eating it i was like damn i had to make salmon patties out of the, all of it the only way to consume that shit <laughs> but yeah the same way i was like hell yeah i'm taking all this salmon home this is gonna be awesome you know but definitely <laughs> not any good uh, yeah but, but yeah just having a cabin to go to that's something we had we had a hunting heritage podcast we did and you know having a place just for your kids to be able to go up there and you guys and how your mm. grandkids be able to go up there and you guys created it. Um, you don't think it right now, but that's going to be special as hell when your kid gets to take his kid to that cabin. That's going to be, I don't know if you guys plan on having mm-hmm. kids or have kids, but it's going to be a very special moment when they're, you know, they're going to be like, damn, yeah, grandpa built this sucker, like all of it. Yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, that's going to find all the whiskey cool. bottles in the walls, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, then you're like, yeah, that six pointer was, you know, 28 years ago or something. I mean, that's just yeah. going to be so. I wish I had that. Like, I wish mm-hmm. I had the place to be able to go with my grandpa or whatever and be like, yeah, this, this book I killed in, you know, 91 or, you know, 2001. Yeah. Like, that'd be so sick to, to, to see. So, mm hmm. Mad props yeah. for you guys putting the time in. I know it couldn't have been easy. I'm sure it was all generators and yeah, yeah, yeah putting yeah, it together. Definitely. And yeah, oh, yeah, a lot of a lot of labor of love right there. But oh yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we had the you know the vision of what it was going to be when we were done, and it, I mean it's it's wonderful. We love it. So yeah, the property itself still a work in progress. I know there wasn't an oak tree on the farm last year. Um, and would we plant over 200, 200 trees, this trees year. Uh, wow. in the spring? And I just got an order. I ordered it yesterday, a bunch of fruit trees and some pine trees and stuff that we're putting up there. 
Nice, so, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah, you guys are making some a very special place for kids and grandkids. And, and you yeah, guys no should do it when you get older. And Yeah, um, that's the plan anyway. Yeah. Uh, I, hope it, I hope it goes full circle for you guys. You guys start shooting some, been fun. some nice class deer up there. But I know with yeah, that cabin nice. going on, what you guys got – you know, hanging out there so much. There's got to be like one epic story that you guys can actually tell on on air. So, if there was one <laughs> epic story that you could let the listeners know um, a little bit more about what you guys do up there, your personalities, what do you think it would be? Night one. Yeah, probably yeah. night one. It's. Uh, <laughs> so, well, it, I guess it'd be like night point five because yeah. the cabin wasn't officially <laughs> done. Um, we were, I mean, just so jacked to have this thing done. And I mean, it wasn't done yet, but like basically the, the walls the, and the roof were there. <laughs> yeah. But like the eaves were still open and the peak was still open. It hadn't really been like dried in yet. No insulation. Yeah. yeah no insulation. Oh, yeah. And it's, and it's like snowing outside and all we had for like, we had like some cardboard, some sticks and like some two by fours to burn in the wood stove. And we had burned like everything by probably like two, three in the morning. And we're like all huddled around this like wood stove trying to get warm. <laughs> and like, we were supposed to hunt the next morning and we were, I mean, I, we were like frozen. It was, you know, like in the teens and we're just like huddling around this thing. And then we found like, there's like this diner that like opens at like five 30 for like all the old folks in town. And we just like huddled and huddled, like trying to stay warm until like five 30, we could go and get like warmed up. But, um, there weren't quite enough beers that night. Yeah, so no, <laughs> you needed. Yeah, we, we needed a lot more. We got any warm more. beers? We got any warm beers yeah. around here? Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's yeah. been plenty of, uh, you know, drunken nights at the cabin that any deer camp would have. Yeah. Um, but I mean, like, you know, we've we got our buddy Trevor, and he's he killed his first buck ever at the cabin with us, and. I mean, just for, for, to be at somebody's first buck other than my own and stuff like the kid, he grew up like two hours South of us and like Pittsburgh area. Yeah. Like Pittsburgh yeah. area. So like for us, that's like two He's hours. A city kid, yeah. Big so. city kid, never mm -hmm. really hunted or anything. Came up here for college. We became buddies just because Tom and Frank worked with them and got into hunting because of us. And Tom got him his first Turkey in the spring. And then that fall we took him up. He got his first buck uh, up at the cabin. I mean, we, I mean, got, totally drunk that <laughs> night like just partied our asses off for trevor and yeah. you know cooked the heart and tenderloins on the stove and just i mean had a good old time and i mean and he actually we didn't ask him to but he wanted his buck in the cabin too like that was like he didn't even want to bring it home he's oh, like i want to ask yeah like it, we because i never would have asked him to like yeah. leave your first buck because like i got my first buck at home and he's like no man like every buck that's been killed here is up on the wall like i want mine a part of that so, you know, his buck's still on the wall. We got his picture up there and he still has a blast up there all the time with us, but it's just been pretty cool to have that part of it as well. Just out of curiosity, is there any bushes close to your yeah, cabin? Yeah. Because <laughs> if, homie, if homie ever makes it up there, that's where he'll end up if he gets hammered. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> that's how Tom is. <laughs> yeah. I like no, the it's, not, it's not that obvious. It's like an actual bush, like a, a tree bush that, we have an inside joke where when I shot my 193, uh, he almost got stabbed Holy at the smokes. bar. And then, and then it, how cold was it? It was like, it was, well, it was snowing. Yeah. It was four inches of snow. He was in now. a t-shirt. sounds like premium content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was in a t-shirt and we got this snap that's legendary save from our Snapchat group. He's in this bush hiding out. He's got this giant chew in. Don't even chew. He's got a giant chew in. <laughs> <laughs> he's spitting and he's like, trying to find me. You're trying to come out here in this bush. <laughs> this biker gang trying to find me. He's like, I called my wife. She's on my way. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the yeah. flavor of your first buck. Yeah. yeah. Hey, we're we're know, keeping it PG, I, I guess. <laughs> No, yeah, no, I don't think so. But I had a two week old baby at home. Oh, she had yeah. to get out. Of bed. <laughs> had a two year old. Had to get out of bed. At yeah, I mean it was closing time of the bar, so it's two yeah. thirty probably. Yeah. I'm getting. I'm out there out running a biker game. Hey, I just didn't want the night in. Cody shot freeze. Hey, um, we. I just didn't want the night like in, man. That, that's Frank yeah. killed the biggest buck on the property on a. a 
drunken night like that. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost. I got smacked by a girl at the bar and then we went home from there, fell asleep, got up in the morning and I wasn't in the woods 10 minutes and shot the biggest buck we've ever killed up there. It's not a yeah. monster, but it's a decent For buck. For a New York buck, yeah. it's a really good Yeah, deal. But we That's barely even act. made it into the woods that morning and... <laughs> We are back drinking whiskey by like 8.30 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> it was like beautiful. Over. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> it was fun. Mm. Well, going back to that, that you know, first night in the cabin, that I bet you, you know, you guys being all family and you're just around that stove, no electricity, you know, you might have your phones, but you're, it's probably too cold to even get your hands out. Phones so were dead. There, yeah, yeah, they were dead. You just sat so there cold. talking and enjoying each other's company, so. Like it probably yeah, sucked it, in that moment, but it's that type B fun. Oh, absolutely. You look back and you're like, man, that was actually pretty oh, badass, yeah. you know. Uh, we oh, yeah, we, that's, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, we did. That's definitely shit, one of our but, favorite stories to tell about the cabin is that first night because Nick had you know a bunch of like small hardwood pieces that you know like a foot long, just fire starting pieces, so you can actually get a fire going in the wood stove. And he had a ton of them and he's like, yeah, this will you know, be good fire starters for us for, you know, the whole year, year and a half, whatever. <laughs> Just burn a couple of them here and there. And then that night we burned every single one of them standing there like, what the hell? This sucks. You're like, yeah, what? Started the whole four, ins- yeah. What do you guys <laughs> need to hold yeah. this sucker up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that started the whole inside joke with us about like there not being a draft in the cabin. Cause like it was drafty at first. Cause obviously we didn't have everything closed off. So like now yeah. it's like fully insulated and everything. And it's like, we'll be sitting at the table, like 15 beers in or whatever. And it's like, you guys don't feel a draft, do you? Like, Oh hell no, there's no draft in here. <laughs> I got like, it's like, we got hit like triple digits on the, on the thermometer temp gauge. And it's, I mean, the, the wood stove we've got in there is like good for like four times the size of the place. Yeah. And just, I mean, it almost cooks you out. Mm-hmm. But Something about a fun. good wood stove when you walk in. Oh, it's like 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 got a, you got a yeah. good wood stove going just homey and, warm cooking on yeah. that some bitch i mean that oh yeah primo. shitty coffee in the morning on a percolator <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> wake up still drunk yeah. so <laughs> can't wait to have some shit cop yeah <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it'd be fun for like three days at a time and you'd be like i guess yes. yeah, that's about max. <laughs> exactly <laughs> you hit the nail on the head yeah i need to i need to cut loose and relax for three days and then you're like all right it's sunday i'm about to get the hell out of this place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. time to get civilized again. Yeah. it was yeah. what two two years ago i spent a week by myself in the cabin uh it was like winter break or something mm-hmm. for college i decided i was gonna head up there and could do a little trapping excursion for a week. And I tell you, after a week of nothing, no like, power, no, no power, no electricity, no nothing. Like I went a little nuts. <laughs> yeah, I, I can imagine. Like the first day, you'd be like, it's kind of nice. This ain't bad. Oh, it was day totally day. It was sweet to disconnect and everything. But then after a week, it's like, yeah, day three, man, you're like, like, shit, there ain't nothing going on right now. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I go check the traps morning, again. It, like, seven eight o'clock i'd go check my trap line and then i get back at like 10 o'clock and i'm like shit i have 12 hours before i go to bed like i don't know what to do now <laughs> but, <laughs> it was a good time all right well uh just this point i want you guys to let people know kind of where they can find your brand um where they can find your podcast your social um and then I don't know if you guys have individual socials that you guys want to give out, but let the listeners know where they can find you guys. Yeah. So uh, on Instagram, uh, we're white cat underscore outdoors. And on Facebook, we're just white cat outdoors um, on there's like a link tree in both of our um, social medias that sends you to all of our podcasts. But um, we're on pretty much every platform at this point, you know, Apple, Spotify, our radio, Pandora, like the big ones. Uh, you look up white cat outdoors and it, you know, it's, pretty easy. Um, you type in white cat outdoors on Google, you'll find our website and every platform we're on. Um, nice. we're on, we have our podcast on YouTube and there's like a couple, you know, gear review videos and stuff, but like we haven't dove into that quite yet, but you can check that out. Um, we're not active on social media besides white cat outdoors. Like, I mean, yeah, I post you're not on mine s- like once a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, there's no there's reason that. to follow that, but <laughs> okay. white cat outdoors. Right. I mean, it's, it's more than just hunting for us. Like it's, it's hunting whitetails. It's, you know, guiding up in Alaska, it's fishing, uh, playing with rattlesnakes down in the mountains. Uh, it's just a little flavor of everything outdoors. And our big tagline is, you know, get outside. 
um, you know, just whatever, by any means necessary, just get outside, bring somebody else with you. And, you know, basically that's it for us. Nice. Yeah. Can't beat that, man. Getting outside. That's a great message to, to let people, you know, they, they need to hear it. They're like, damn it. I need to, I need to get out of here. Cause I know some people that mm-hmm. there's I, having a desk job and some bullshit like that. That would, I'd go insane. I don't know how people do it. I have no idea. Yeah. I'm outside yeah. every day we, for hours and hours. You know, we so. end every podcast with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every single podcast at the end, we just you know that's what we leave. Just get outside by any means. You know, whether it's fishing, hunting, trapping, shed hunting, whatever you want to do, just get outside. Yeah, I know you so. guys have talked about filming, so hopefully I get to see a little film from you guys this year. If you guys are gonna, yeah, I mean, we got some uh, that, but. a lot of like a lot of little clips and stuff. We haven't, you know, dove into like making a full production yet, but we're, we've got a lot of, you know, like smaller clips um, just from over hunting stuff. We still are working with Adobe and trying to figure out how to put it together to make it a good story. Yeah. Um, we've it's got some, yeah. Camp, some camera equipment. So we're, we're working on it. It's sort of like the podcast thing. It's slowly but surely <laughs> coming along. <laughs> Yeah. Just put a yeah. date on it and let it rip. <laughs> yeah, we'll just start telling people <laughs> this day is when we're doing it, so we'll have to figure got, it out. Well, that's, <laughs> that's we actually, coming out in July. Yeah, we started filming. We had, <laughs> we had the worst gear that you could possibly oh. get, probably. So everybody's got to start somewhere, and then we just yeah. invested and took our time. And uh, if it's something you guys yeah. enjoy, you know, you're you want to keep growing there. But uh, this mm-hmm. is yeah, new that's for. Actually, go ahead. Well. Oh, I was just saying like for, uh, you know, the big thing with us, like, you know, setting things out there is like, we always announce it before we actually know what we're doing. But like the big thing with the podcast, um, from day one, our mission statement's always been like bringing people to the table while we talk about the outdoors. Um, so coming real soon, we're going to, um, actually it's going to be a live podcast every Wednesday, you know, while we're meeting, we're going to make it an interactive thing where people can literally, you know, join us at the table. And if they've got questions for us or our guests, you know, just like join in on, on a live feed. And they can participate and join in with us. You know, it's going to be every Wednesday at six, you know, that, that should be the next week or two for us. So that'll be something more to get our guests or I mean, our uh, listeners involved and in more than just, you know, like putting a message on Instagram, they can just tune in for you know a few minutes, have a beer with us and just kind of kick it back and be a part of it with us. Cause that's what we want is just bringing people together. Yeah. I like that idea a lot. <clears throat> a lot. Live video is cool. I mean, get comments coming in. Yeah, you could bring some yeah. value to, to people because, I mean, us over here, we're like, what do you think the listeners would like to mm-hmm. listen, you know, would like to hear? And it's nice. Yeah. Got live comments coming in and they say, what about, you know, what about this tactic? And you guys can touch on that. Or what about this story? And you guys can go off that. So I think that's a great idea. Reach more people and and, uh, you know, like you said, bring more people to the outdoors. And that that's your guys' mission. That's definitely a good one. Yeah. Too. Mm-hmm. COVID, COVID got the numbers up, so I'll be interested to see if they're all like they're still like ah, oh, this numbers are going down, down, down. But mm-hmm. numbers are way yeah. up this year, so hopefully sure. the trend continues. But yeah, um, yeah. One thing we've been adding is uh, a life lesson. I didn't send this in the guys' show notes, so the surprise. <laughs> we uh we've been trying to add a life lesson. Maybe it's hunting, work related, family related, anything that you could give our listeners. Um, one tidbit of advice you wish you would have known earlier. Uh, we, me and homie, we like hunting and shit, but we also like to try to live the absolute best life you can, you know what I mean? Whether it's with our families or whatever. So I think these, the last one we got on the last episode was really solid. So we'll start with you, Nick. If you could give one tidbit of knowledge, what, what do you think? What do you think you um, give? So for me, like it, it applies to hunting directly, but it also can be used uh, for life as well. And I'm a big proponent or uh, advocate for hunt your own hunt. Um, and what that means to me is, you know, don't worry about what everybody else is doing. Do what's, you know, what is important to you and what's like, you know, don't worry about if somebody's shooting one eighties, you know, if you're happy shooting a spike, do it. And you can apply that to life too. Like, don't, you know, you don't have to worry about, you know, whoever I went to school with doing this or whatever, like stay in your lane, hunt your hunt, um, and just do your own thing and do what makes you happy. That's great, man. We we live by that like 110. Yeah. percent And when you actually can do that, it's a game changer. When you just stop mm, yeah. giving a shit about, you know, my my life is solid, so I'm good. I don't give a shit what you got going on. Besides, if it's someone I care about, like homie, I'm gonna I'm gonna 
I'm going to message him and be like, I'm going to tweak this guy a little bit and get him motivated to go yeah. a little more. But all right, yeah, Jake, yeah. you're up. Uh, I would definitely say just like try new things all the time. Like with us rattlesnake hunting stuff, you know, that's something that none of us had ever thought about doing before. And then all of a sudden we're like, you know, what, let's go try this. It's something in the summertime, we don't really have anything that gets us going outside, going out, walking in the woods. So rattlesnake season's in the middle of summer. So let's go out and do that. You know, just anything that gets you outside or just doing something new, different times of the year, any time of the year, try something new. It's something you've never done before never thought about doing. Just find something that might pique your interest and give it a shot. If it does, sweet, keep doing it. If not, then go move on to something else. Find something else new that'll get you going. People think I'm crazy for hand fishing. These guys out there rattlesnake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got that. I got shit out there, man. I got <laughs> Uh, All right, Tom, you're up, man. You've been over there oh. in the corner being quiet. <laughs> I'm going to have to say uh, live every – live in the moment. Um, I know a lot of times, like, you know, I'll be out in the tree stand hunting or something, and I'm, I recently graduated college, but I'd be thinking about, like, oh, shit, I got this homework to do. I got this exam I got to worry about. I got this going on at work, and I think it takes away – a lot from, you know, what's going on at that specific time. Um, I, I think it's really important to, you know, concentrate on what you're doing now, not letting all the outside stuff deter you from, you know, what you're trying to focus on at that time. And I know like if I, it's, it's very tough to do, but if you can, you know, focus on, you know, just being in the tree stand right now, focus on, you know, the birds chirping or, you know, the squirrel you see running underneath your tree, it makes the hunt a lot more enjoyable mm -hmm. i really I like that one too. yeah it's it's hard to put that shit on the back burner while you're out there but a guy needs mm -hmm. that time yeah i think that's like people people ask me like when i'm at the gym what i think about i'm like i don't think about nothing dude. <laughs> my brain is out my brain is blank as shit i need I'm that like symbols <laughs> yeah i need that freaking 45 minutes an hour to just blank out and then i come out of there i'm like all right let's start this day same thing with hunting you go out there and have a good you know refreshing hunt maybe you didn't see what you were looking for but you live in that moment and you come out of it a little bit fresher and then also living in the moment you're going to pick up on more stuff if you're not distracted by your phone yeah. or mm -hmm. other shit you know yeah. so, you know just like us i mean these the white tails man they like you got a 10 second reaction time on most of your yeah. kills you know and if you're not in the moment you're yeah. definitely miss out on some opportunities so that was good three Absolutely. three so i like throwing this i thought it might be a little harder throwing it at people but everybody's just crushing <laughs> everybody sure. we had on the show <laughs> just crushing it but all right guys well you got anything else that you want to let our listeners know no just uh check out our podcast if you like it uh you know subscribe so you can keep listening um let us know what you think i guess i mean we're we're fluid so i mean if stuff people like well we can change it up do what you want um so, yeah, just check us out and let us know what you think. If it's like November 2nd and I wake up randomly in the middle of the night, I know you guys are going to be hammered in a cabin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, like, that's those, accurate. Those white cat boys are really getting it on right yeah, now. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Might have to sneak into that Snapchat group. We'll let you know. Yeah. <laughs> that would be epic. <laughs>